What were the missions like? Because you were escorting bombers um, at the at the time was one of the great uh, attributes of the P-51 was the range to be able to escort bombers all the way into Germany and back. Um, that capability was just coming on. It was an extraordinary airplane, even in the B model, was an extraordinary airplane. Uh, and steady upgrades were made. Most people, I think, are more familiar with the P-51D with the with the bubble canopy. But but tell us a little bit about what those missions were like and what air combat was like back then. Because there are folks who say that you you went from being in a sky that was completely tumbling with airplanes, and then the next second you were by yourself. Actually, when we were talking once, you said you were in this giant scrum, and then all of a sudden you found yourself alone. Talk to us a little bit about what these gigantic air battles were like. A typical mission. I don't think there is such a thing as a typical mission, but um, because every mission you fly, you're kind of dealt a hand, you know, and you had to play it, what I, you know, what you had. Um, but uh, the bombers would get out and go out early and we'd still be in bed, we could hear them. So we knew there was a mission going that day and you were, you were picked the day before, not knowing what the mission was. And, uh, <clears throat> um, you get up and have breakfast and uh, uh, go to the to the central briefing, the group group wide briefing, get all the particulars of the flight, and uh, then uh, go to your squadron. And you'll still have a little bit of time left, and uh, you uh, brief, you know, your own flight. Uh, what you knew. Then to go out to the airplane, just uh, you kind of gauge that where you were in the flight and the wind pattern. And, and, and uh, we took off in uh, squadron strength, uh, group strength almost every day. And uh, of course, that clogged all the, run the runways and uh, stuff with airplanes. 48 airplanes plus two spares for every squadron. And you, you taxied out, you know, you found your, the guy to follow <laughs> or lead, or you were lead. What well, was an incredible ballet to try to get oh, all of yeah, these airplanes in yeah. the air. And uh, the lead squadron would take off, they'd flag them off so you kind of get the interval uh, correct, and join up as a squadron, and the lead squadron make about two turns around the pattern. Uh, big, big uh, things to let the other squadrons join up. And we'd roll out and uh, on a course for rendezvous with the bombers and say, uh, they would head out to a pretty distinct uh, uh, landmark and uh, turn, say, and go toward their targets and uh, proceed on down. It's kind of a triangle, you know, like that, come home. And we knew we had a rendezvous time. The bombers were supposed to be in this big line and there could be a thousand bombers in this lineup. They flew in little three ship V's to maximize their position for all the guns they had uh, on board. And say they would be in a kind of a group of about 60 and then there'd be another 60 and another 60 and another 60 as far as you could see especially if you were pulling contrails. It was quite quite impressive. And so we had specific group to, to escort and you'd fly to the, to the rendezvous point and then fly up and down the, usually up 
the line and look at the big numbers on the tail. So the uh, triangle A, square D, or whatever. And I know he, people have seen those big letters on the tail of a B-17. That was to help you guys find them. Yeah, one of the things. And then you'd, um, now I gotta either talk before Jimmy Doolittle or after Doolittle, <laughs> after Doolittle took over because he made a, he made a significant uh, change in things in the Eighth Air Force. Uh, well, we might talk about that. How did Doolittle change things from okay. your standpoint as a fighter pilot? Well, when we first got over there, the Eighth Air Force was run by bomber pilots, and they told us what to do, how to how to escort. And what we were supposed to do, what we did, was uh, rendezvous with the bombers, and then you do. Uh, weave over the top of them and, you know, you could fly up and down the sides. If the enemy came in, they wanted us to drive them away and then come back. And we actually had a, a limit on, the, we could go to 18,000 feet. And if you had to shot the enemy down, by then you had to break it off and come back up and join the bombers again. And that's what we did. Well, we weren't doing a, a real good job of defeating the Luftwaffe with the conventional tactics of strategic bombing uh, to go in there, blow up the factories and the airfields and the airplanes on the ground and go after significant things like uh, the fuel and uh, the ball bearings and stuff like that. And there was a point in the war uh, late uh, fall of uh, 43 when they halted the bombing because of the losses. And then Doolittle took over in early 44. And uh, I didn't realize some of the stuff that was going on. I read the Doolittle book uh, after, uh, you know, many years later and said that he went to, down to visit the uh, Eighth Fighter Command run by General uh, Kepner. And there was a big sign on the, over the door where he entered in and said the mission of the Eighth Fighter Command was to bring the bombers home safely, something like that. And he says, uh, who put that up there? He said, I don't know, it was there when I got here. He says, well, tear it down. He said, the mission of the 8th Fighter Command is to destroy the Luftwaffe. We had to destroy the Luftwaffe, or at least gain air superiority before we could invade Europe. And uh, uh, that, was a, that was a real thing that, that, that we had to do first. And so, um, he said, from now on, you fighter pilots, when you engage the enemy, you follow them to the ground and kill them. And the spring of, uh, spring of 1944, I think most historians agree that, uh, that we broke the back of the Luftwaffe. And how did we actually do that? We did it by killing their, their uh, experienced pilots. Germany didn't have much of a replacement pilot program. They thought they could uh, win the war with what they had. And, uh, and so we, we killed them in aerial combat. 